here we are episode eight of ordinary other selective files and man what a special episode we got here man we got a new studio around us hey we got some luxurious guests with us today you already know we got mr najai and Aliyah herself how you guys doing today we're doing good, good. you guys are doing good yeah. how did you guys find your way over here was it good how was traffic no, nah, traffic wasn't that bad. No, right? It wasn't that, too bad. That's what I said, because I was on speeding my way from work. <laughs> and I'm like, man, this just has this just can't be the day I get traffic. So thank God, yeah. I didn't have no troubles getting here too. We made it in just a nick of time. So I'm blessed to be here and have you guys for a dope conversation. Appreciate so. you, appreciate what you. What you guys been up to this week? You guys had a good weekend? Yeah. Oh yeah, we had a great week. It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> what you did? Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I got to stop. How old are you? Because you're the youngest guest on the Ordinary Others podcast so far. I'm six. Six <laughs> years old. Oh, my God. Yeah. How does it feel to be the youngest guest on Ordinary Others? I guess good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would. That's a good answer, okay? We're going to see if the answer changes at the end. So I got to ask, man. You guys have a beautiful relationship. And Thank you guys you. are like, it's, it's so pure, you know, that... I know that doesn't come easy, so how do you, like, what's what's your niche? Man, um, well, I would like to start that with, it is easy because I had a great example. Um, my dad was a great dad. So being a dad and building that bond and that chemistry, it wasn't really hard like I thought it would be because I just do everything he showed me, and it was easy. You know, me and her have a great relationship. Trust me. We done been through some, we done been through some shit now, but me and her got a great relationship, but mainly what I noticed is, uh, it's almost like a reenactment of me and my dad. So it's not really that hard. I'm just doing what was already taught. And that's a beautiful thing, man. Cause you know, I see you guys look like you have so much in common. So how did, did everything getting behind the camera? How did all that start off? You want me to tell me? Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> So I do no cap productions. Mm -hmm. um, I also make a bunch of Instagram content, stuff like that. And she always sees me. You know, I don't hide anything from her. I don't lie to her. She literally knows every last detail about me. And how important <laughs> is that? A lot of people tell me I'm wrong, but. But he's not. <laughs> <laughs> but she loves it. You know what I'm saying? So I learned this from Derek Grace on um, Instagram. I don't, I don't not curse around her i don't um hide my emotions and feelings around her but i also explain to her why i feel the way i feel or why i do the things i do there's always an explanation it's exactly. not just a pop up and mm -hmm. and i don't i don't there's hide a reason for something i don't hide not a thing from her she knows she knew everything about me even to the t of when i was homeless she was the only person that knew my family didn't know. My friends didn't know. No, Nobody knew. She was the only person that knew. And she was also the only person that motivated me. We just built this little bond. Um, I'm her coach. You know, I coach her in tennis. I coached her in track. So we built this little bond to where we're teammates. Mm. And okay. she tells me everything. <laughs> and I feel like the reason she feels comfortable telling me everything is due to the fact that I'm honest with her, too. She knows everything I'm telling her is not a lie. From if I tell her, hey, this is going to happen, she knows this is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't hide, sugarcoat, nothing. Yeah, you know, it's crazy you say that because obviously you know the world we live in is not the purest. Yeah. So um, I think that not hiding anything is actually a good example because, you know, when when the birds leave the nest, you know, you can't control what's out there, you know. For example, I have a little sister, man. She's 14 years old, and she wants to start driving. And I was telling her that, man, you know, you feel like, but you got to say the truth. You got to be like, look, just because you're a good driver doesn't mean everybody else is. You know, you got to warn her for the study. Like, they are drunk drivers on the road. Yeah. You know, there are just Everything. people. Yeah, people that are irresponsible. Men that are going to try to use you for rides. Mm -hmm. and every little thing. So you know. I think it's very important just to say everything out there because, if you don't, then they're going to go out and experience those things and they're not going to say anything because they're exactly. like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble. Or exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the core values that I raised her on. I always tell her, you're better off 
getting in trouble with me than dealing with the consequences of life. So she knows she could come tell me something and she might get yelled at. But she also knows that if she doesn't come tell me, she has the potential of getting hurt out in the street. You know what I'm saying? Or some with her mom. She knows that she could come talk to me. And I'm a ch- even though I might yell or get mad if she does something wrong, I'm still going to figure out a way to protect her. And this little girl has told me all <laughs> kind of little secrets and stuff like that. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> uh, she literally tells me stuff that I know for a fact she doesn't tell nobody else. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing to me. But a lot of people, because it's not the society norm, so a lot of people tell me I'm wrong. Because they don't understand what's not, what's not normal but to them. But he's not wrong about that. <laughs> Why is he not wrong about that? Because it's actually true. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. The truth. That's what <laughs> yeah. matters. That's what I raise her on. Mm-hmm. I tell her all the time, the truth shall Honesty is the best policy. It is. It will honestly keep everything aligned. It will. There, There's this new thing called anxiety out there today. Every, um, fucking everybody I know has it. And my personal belief is anxiety kicks in a lot when nobody's born with anxiety. So, and I was, I studied mental health. I used to be a mental health counselor for, really? youth, for the youth. Yeah, How did I, that come about? Um, I'm a criminal justice major. I'm actually, a lot of people just see me do this goofy shit on Instagram <laughs> and stuff and just think I'm some dumbass. But I'm a college graduate. I have my college degree. I almost have, I have almost have basically a double major in psychology. Um, and through my studies, I've learned my dad was a federal agent too. Oh wow! So he he taught me young that ADHD and ADD aren't real. DEA is classifying that those things are not real. It's a man-made disease cured with man-made drugs. So even anxiety today, I dare somebody that's watching this find me any baby that's born with anxiety. You won't. It's no <laughs> documented baby babies no born with it. Oh boy. So what's anxiety? Anxiety is when you trap your kid inside the house and don't teach them about the world, uh, and then mm. the world overwhelms them. Mm-hmm. They don't know how to answer. They stress. A uh, 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 bad decision. Exactly. And then what does what happens? They have a bad decision. They feel bad about themselves. And then the the, the anxiety only grows because the the life that you have piped into them is a lie. It's all lies. So now they got to figure this shit out by the damn self. I'm not going to let her do, go through that. Like, you you know this term, daddy issues? <laughs> yeah. She ain't finna have that. I'm not worried about that. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to pave the way so she's straight. You know what I'm saying? At all costs. She already knows r- wrong, right, whatever. I'm out the front door. Like, there's been times where someone got <laughs> that uh, in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> little funny story about that. Sorry. Oh man, she, you guys uh, have to laugh <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, she had uh, I had caught her <laughs> lying about somebody to get that somebody in trouble, <laughs> and that's how she know right wrong. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I'm out the front door. We'll deal with the rest later. So, off rip, I addressed the situation. Boom, and then. Through what I'm hearing from the other person, I realize, oh shit, <laughs> you know, Jit done got me caught up. <laughs> but I'm not worried about that because she also felt comfortable enough to tell me what was really good. So, yeah, I was mad that she lied to me, but she's lying to me to get a reaction. So, no, I need to figure out why you want this, why you need that reaction. It's like you got to go to the stem of it. Exactly. You, know? you can't exactly. look at the branches, you got to look at the roots. What, exactly. What made it grow. And that, to me, is where anxiety and all that stuff kick in because it's like a lot in society today, people don't want to face the facts and they don't want to attack the root of mm-hmm. the problem. They want to make excuses and do this, do that, do this, especially with their kids. One thing I noticed, I, like I said, I work with Henderson Mental Health for kid, the kids department. I'm a, I'm a football coach. I yeah, trained her. That too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm you got to stop being humble, bro. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you got it all, man. Hey, I appreciate that. I'm I'm a jack of all trades, bro. I, I, I'm really blessed. Like I said, my dad put me in a position to where 
I can do a lot of things. It kind of sounds like like you're, you and your family are like a fan of like discipline, you know, like my not parents in a were bad both, way. But my parents were both military. Mm -hmm. My parents were both law enforcement. I'm the only wild child in the family. Um, and I, I got like this because of football, but growing up, it was very structured. It, all the stuff I'm doing now, if my dad was still alive, ain't this shit ain't going down. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, this is going down because mm -hmm. he's gone. But it had to happen. You know what I'm saying? But no, I'm very structured. What I show on social media is my alter ego. Right. That's the fun side. But you could ask her when it comes to life. I don't play no games. You know what I'm saying? When I, when it comes to real mm -hmm. life, I don't play no games. You know what I'm saying? My life is very important to me. My no games at all. <laughs> 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 but um, I'm a youth football coach, and one of the biggest problems why I quit coaching teams and not kids. Was this school teams or was this just like city teams? Um, No, no, no. These are city teams. I was coaching at West Pines Wildcats. Okay. Um, What's up? Oh, okay, I was coaching at West Pines Wildcats. Um, and one of the main issues that I noticed is I'm not dealing with the kids. I'm dealing with the parents. <laughs> Man, if I tell the parents your kid's a little timid, no, oh he's not. Boy. No, he, yeah, she, <laughs> she you, knows the deal. Cause I tell parents straight up. I, don't, one of the, I got fired. Look, I got fired from coaching. Because at the exit meeting at the end of the year, I literally, this this lady signed her son up for football. Right. This nigga had a neurological problem on the left oh side of his body. Oh, my God. So he would get his cleats knocked off. Bow, boom. Just Already the nigga could barely move it. it yeah. He over here limping like this and shit. So what you want to say? Okay. That is not a good sign for football. Yeah, yeah hell you no. Know. So, boom, at the end of the year, I'm like, look, I'm not finna watch that shit again. And I told no. the mom straight no, up. No, no, no. <laughs> I told the mom straight up, your son shouldn't be playing football. And how did she take it? She got mad at me. Knowing that her me, son has a disorder. And she said he needs to build his toughness. But well, here we go with society. This it's is where so weird. It's like a up. touchy thing when it comes to that because, okay, I understand, like, what she wants. Like, I understand that, of course, but the most toughest, rough neck is sport of them all. Why can't he do karate? Why can't he do boxing? Why can't he do... It's so many Basketball. other ways. Ba like, this... <laughs> toughness is a mental thing. And I want to say this to all parents. Toughness is a mental thing. Stop thinking that... Forcing your kids to do some shit to get beat up on is going to make them tough. The same kids that play football that were scared to hit in Little League are the same grown men that play in college that are scared to hit. You can't teach toughness. It's not happening. Toughness is a mental thing from the neck up. That's not something you could teach. It's something somebody has to want. Stop doing that to these motherfucking kids because at the end of the day, all you do is make them a hitting dummy or really beat them into the ground. And then they don't even want to do none of that shit no more. Mm -hmm. I met a lot of kids playing that played Little League football when I was coaching that I knew had the talent to play later on but didn't have the drive because their parents are forcing them to do shit too early. Mm -hmm. That's fucked up because you don't know what that kid could have been. But you wanting to... Rush the process. process. Exactly. You fucking it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm... S I know you guys are going to be like, oh, my God, he's cursing and his daughter's right next to him. Hey, I could curse and my daughter be right here. My daughter know better than that. My daughter knows to be better than me. My daughter knows. Yeah, and I also tell you when not to curse. Ooh, so you know mm -hmm. how that, you, you, you check him when he curses. Oh, huh? yeah, all the time. She <laughs> she she is my biggest critic. If I don't got my seatbelt on, <laughs> jit at the front. Daddy, I don't, don't move the car till you put your seatbelt on. If I curse, she'll be like, Dada, you know, <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to do that. But I also teach her, and this is a little learning tip. A lot of you parents be lame as fuck, I be seeing. Um, Dad! <laughs> a lot you of y'all. You guys caught the first chance right here. <laughs> but, man, I be seeing y'all dudes on Instagram with more shoes than your kids. Y'all spend more money on yourselves and these other little whoop whoop out there now that's crazy than your own kids exactly and that's crazy to me that you would give a really better crazy. life to really, people really, that really don't crazy. really know you 
than your kid. My daughter already knows I'm out the front door. Like I said, she got this year. I don't probably bought her double the amount of clothes and shoes that I bought myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just the type of relationship I feel like every parent needs to have with their kid. Before you expect your kid to follow your lead, you got to teach them what it's like. You know what I'm saying? What this real life is like. So she already know. She got a job. She works. Six years old, got a job already? <laughs> I wish I would have been like you. What's your job? What, what do you do? No, that, that. Right. Or, okay, hold I'm on. Proud and happy you Let me ask you a question. In the mic. Look at the mic, Jit. Don't look at me. Yes. Hey, so, <laughs> all right. During the pandemic, right? Yes. How did you make money? By working hard. Where? Doing what? By working out. And? And working hard. No, and what <laughs> else? Studying, right? Right. And how much money would you get for working out and studying? Five dollars. Do you remember <laughs> how much? Do you remember how much money you made over the pandemic? No. All right, I'll tell you, two hundred dollars. So That's more than you, I was getting. I was getting paid from the government. Okay. Hey, I didn't get paid <laughs> at all. I got the shop closed down. Shop, yes. I ain't get no PPP. I ain't get no so none of that. You, how you did at you least deal with had that? money. How did you? How did you say, okay, you know, I got to be mentally strong for my daughter, even though this fucked up situation is going on right now? Because nobody thought in a million years that in this day and age that we would be in a situation like that. The pandemic was the greatest thing that happened to me and my daughter. I say the same. Um, All right. So let me give you a little background story about the pandemic. Um, I'm not going to get too, too much into detail, but a week before the pandemic started, I actually regained my custody of my daughter hmm. so i had been going to court for two years and a week before the pandemic started the judge finally regranted me overnights and all that type of stuff and you could ask her i work like a rake i work six days a week i got one day off today yeah <laughs> that's crazy you, i appreciate it no it you already know not I ate. Too, too crazy i've been waiting for real. this opportunity for a long time so no, yeah, the we've fact been trying that, to get to work for a while actually. you feel me the fact mm -hmm. that you even thought to bring me on here is honored like I'm, i feel honored because at the end of the day i feel like i got a message to tell the world of course. you know what i'm saying so the pandemic hit and for the first time ever i had all the time in the world for her for the first time. I had money saved up. You feel what I'm saying? I had money saved up. Even though I didn't get no PPP, no none. My dad always taught me, man, you don't worry about shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You just keep it moving. And then that's keep when I started. Moving. That's right. And then that's when I started the training program. So I started the training program during the pandemic. So I actually started training kids during the pandemic, and that's how I was making money. That's so, crazy, yeah. man. <laughs> So I've been following you on Instagram, and I see, like, your, your training, like, the way you train these people, man, and it's it's so dope, man. Like, what do, what does that mean to you? I know you said a little bit earlier, but if you can elaborate, what does coaching mean to you and helping one? Because I think that's a big that's a big shoes to fill because, you know, like, it, like when the parents are not there, like you said, you see these kids. You see how they act to stuff. You see how they act to pain. Yeah. So how important is it to you to um, guide them? Training. You know, this that's the first this is the first time I've ever even thought about this because all right, so you don't really think about it, huh? No, really. not really. Yeah. Why not though? It's true. Because if you don't think about it, you might not even know what it is. I know, but I'm thinking about it now. I just said it's the <laughs> first time I'm thinking about it. But thank if you. If you're thinking about it now, then think about it all the time. I will. Hold on. Let that me makes answer. you remember things. Yeah, all right. Sometimes. Let yeah. me answer the question. You don't sometimes know. it makes you remember things. It's not all the time man remembers all right, things. All right. Let me answer. <laughs> okay. Hey, let me just hey, speak. Hey, I like her. She can, she can stir up a good <laughs> argument. <laughs> so what was the question again? See, you how did you track. feel? How do you feel Shh. coaching a Shh. coaching people, knowing that you know these these are some of these kids' passion, and you know you train them, you 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 put you see how they react to pain, 
You know, you see how they are when they come to practice. You can tell when your star athlete is having a good day and a bad day. So how important is that to you to be that figure? Um, It's really important to me because, and anybody that's watching this that follows me could tell you, I made it to a really high place it's in It's important to him. <laughs> yeah, I made it to a really high place mm -hmm. in the sport that I love. But where I started at, is that where you got your drive to coach? Of course. Mm -hmm. Because, like, my dad my dad ended up getting me a trainer when I was younger. A, a shout out to Randall Hill. Yay! Um, I didn't get to play football my first two years. I was a bench warmer. You feel and me? And this was for a school team? or a West Pines Wildcats. I was a bench warmer. Wow. And I remember nobody really wanting to help me. I didn't know how to ask for help. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what it took, period. And my dad ended up meeting Randall Hill. He's a UM Hall of Famer, Hall of Fame wide receiver. He's infamous for going into the tunnel against Oklahoma and doing that. Really? And, yeah, and um, my dad interviewed him. And for the interview, he was interviewing with DEA. And my dad ended up hearing him. Like DEA, DEA, right? Like Drug Enforcement <laughs> Administration. Shouts out to Wally Crawford, my dad. That, that boy was on American Gangsters. No way. The B that boy was on American Gangsters. Yeah. That that was crazy. I used to watch that back in the day, but that's another story. Bro. That's a whole, yeah, that's a whole. He <laughs> that's had another the, story. He had the biggest drug bust in Jamaican history at the time. It was $450 million worth of cocaine. Whoa. I, I got to say that's my dad. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So... He noticed that I had a passion for football. When Randall came, he told, you know, he told Randall, mm -hmm. you look out for my son, I'm going to look out for you. So Randall would come to the house three times a week, train me. And I never had nobody do that for me. You know, my dad opened that door. So I knew, and I got, like I said at the beginning, like, I didn't ever think I was going to play college football uh, I remember my high school coaches telling me I should just quit because I would never play college football. I ended up transferring from Everglades. I ended up transferring from Everglades to Charter because my coaches told me I would never play. And I ended up making all county. I ended up getting a scholarship. First, first one of the, uh, the second. Me and my cousin both were the first two in the same year to get athletic scholarships to college. So. Um, I mean, I just figured it's only right to return the favor down, you know, Man, pass that, down the down line. That's crazy because, like, you didn't even give up because you were a bench warmer. I was you a bench warmer. You wanted to be the best, huh? I or not the best, but you wanted to play. I'm not going to lie. Yep. Growing he did up, want to play. Growing up, I'm not going to lie. I never wanted to go to the NFL. Why not? Um, Can you tell me why not? Yeah, please? actually, because, you know, you don't hear that. A lot in people nowadays. Um, Can you please tell I me just why play you didn't want to go to NFL? I just want to play to get the ring. I what wanted, driving you was different? I wanted just... My goal wasn't to play in the NFL. It was just to play it as why long not? as I could. And at the end of the day, that's what I did. And I ended up going farther than a lot of people that started ahead that's, of me. That's, really? that's where I was going to get into next because you see these people that are... You know, they start and they're like, oh, if I, if they start basketball, like, oh, I'm going to go to the NBA and I'm going to get the finals. I'm going to go to the NFL. I'm going to get that Super Bowl ring and, and on so on and so on. So you think there's something in that that kind of like puts down the process? You think it's a false hope of some sort? Like what's the difference between false hope and motivation to you? I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it like this for the podcast. I'm going to say it like this. Parents, stop lying to your kids and thinking that the NFL is the only way. Because sports offers so much more than just the money and going to the league. Every life lesson I have ever learned really is from football and my dad. Yep. My determination is from football. My grit is from football. My willingness to leave it all online is from football. But that also helps me in things like barbering, video content creation, mm -hmm. all that stuff because I take the same principles that I take from football and apply it to everything in life, and I destroy shit. I destroy everything I do, like straight up. That's you know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, he does. You gotta have that yes, attitude. he really does. Yeah. 
And you gotta have a hype man just like that. I That's know, a, God I damn. need I need me one like that, man. Jordan, come over here with me. No, <laughs> but um, no, seriously, like, I I really I really do want to tell parents because I was a coach, I was a player, I've been in the mental health field. Stop looking at the kids as a check. And look for sports for more character and morality development. Because everybody thinks that their kid's going to go to the league. Yeah, they forget what that training and that discipline is like and practicing. Listen, to every parent out there. That is not there, no chocolate chip cookie out there. They're it's not. not. <laughs> it's great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got you to be... You got to be built for that Because when your parents are talking to you and they're saying, look, yeah, we, you're going to do this, you're going to get a Super Bowl ring, you're going to get an NBA championship, but what about that hard-ass practice that's on a Sunday morning at 3 o'clock in the morning? Or just don't give your kid false hopes. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, one thing that really sits with me long and, and hard. that's how you talk to her, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She doesn't no false hopes. We don't. No facade. It, it's not about that because mm -hmm. even, she plays tennis. Okay. And even if she doesn't make it to Wimbledon, I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because at the end of the day, I'm going to make sure if I can, she going to make tennis money regardless. Yay! <laughs> exactly. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I've showed her videos of how much tennis players make. And he's actually make. true, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I really show her all the time. Like, this is what Serena Williams makes. Stop doing that. Right. This is what Serena Williams <laughs> makes. I Dad. show her all the time. This is what Serena Williams makes. And it's funny that a you say that. A lot of money. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> you about to get kicked out the show if you keep doing that. <laughs> so Stop. Look, guys, check this out. Um, You said that, you know, even if she doesn't make it, she's still going to be making tennis money. That was, uh, that was a bar right there. Because, like you said, the sports just shapes the, the your personality. You know, it, it just puts, more like, morals into you. It gives you morals. There's so no doubt in my mind. You're just mind. beyond for greatness in anything besides that type of field, you know. Dream, sky's the limit. That's what there's, I like to tell people. there's no doubt in my mind that as long as I keep doing what I'm doing and I keep the mindset that I have, I'm going to make NFL top 10 money. Mm -hmm. And then if I make NFL top 10 money, she going to be straight. You know what I'm saying? And then she going to be able to do whatever she want to do. And when she has the... When she learns the character and morality that I'm trying to teach her through sports, then that's when I'm going to drop the bag off to her and she going to make tennis money, even if she's not going to Wimbledon. But I know she put in the work, so if she put in the work, she might make it. Exactly, because, you know, the work you put in, it all, like what you get back only shows what the, how much work you put in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, now, and that's what I try to teach mm -hmm. her all the time. And now I need, to get to the, I need to get to the fun stuff because, you know, we heard that. That was an amazing story, man. I appreciate you for thank sharing you, that. You. That was a lot of wisdom. Can I say one oh, thing before? Of course, of course. Um, I just want to let y'all know, anybody that, you know, likes the relationship with me and my daughter, um, I've been through hella shit with this little one. Yeah, uh, tell them, because they make things, oh, it looks like it's easy. No, nah, like this shit blessed. is not easy, bro. <laughs> I've been to court countless amount of times. I did this, that, and the third. And the one thing I will say is, if y'all want to change what we got going on in today's society, y'all just make sure y'all tap in because I'm about to start a foundation for single fathers that want to be in their child's life the way that I do. Um, the foundation will basically be a lot, uh, raising funds for single fathers, low income, so that they could be provided with law, with the with court, with the fees for the court system, lawyer court fees and all that and also i need to read the story because if you're a trash ass dad i'm not <laughs> gonna sit here and get no money for you so i'm gonna have dad send in send in um their story about their kid mm -hmm. video whatever you want to do and where can they send that at uh you can follow me at instagram on instagram at Najee crawford um or you can follow me on tiktok at i am Najee crawford and basically what we'll be doing is tag teaming sponsors with single fathers so that we could finally get this problem fixed in the country. Because me personally, I don't really give a fuck about no pandemic. I don't give a fuck about no Delta virus, none of this dumb ass shit. If you look it up, we got $116 billion worth of uncollected child support debt. Child support is the only system in this country 
that did not stop when the pandemic started. They wanted me to pay $500 a month, and I didn't even have a job. My shop closed. How you going to authorize to close the shop, but you don't authorize to stop the payments? <laughs> so I've, I'm tired of it. I'm going to be the first. Every woman in America can hate me. I don't give a fuck. No, you yeah, I mean? that definitely needs to bring like light upon because yeah, we know. I mean, like you said, we already know the story of there's trash ass dads out there. Yeah, like, we already know that. But what? But about guess what? The ones that actually guess, need help and that are struggling. Guess what? Fifty years has taught me, it's trash ass moms too. Of course, we all in the same boat. There's many trash ass dads there. I've heard trash. I've seen. I've been with trash ass moms. You feel me? So at the end of the day, we still need a better system. Because the system is supposed to be what's in the best interest of the child. Mom, dad, woo I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? It's what's best for the kid. Uh -huh. So at the end of the day, I don't, all that other shit is irrelevant to me. You know, who is providing for their child? And I've come up with a system, and I would like for a lawyer to pick it up or something so that we could really get this in writing. But dad should be allowed to trade time for money. How can you trade? How can you say I could trade my time for money with a job, but I can't trade it with my kid? I actually created this one, but yet I have to listen to what some white lady with a gavel tells me to do with my kid. That that is was insanity. Yeah. It it firmly, especially you know your will. You know you're not one of those so called trash on trash ass dads. Uh -huh. it, but why am I being treated like one? You feel what I'm saying? So if y'all really want to make a change. Um, that's why I'm so blessed to be on here right now. To be honest with you, I've been waiting for a platform so I could really talk about stuff like oh, this. Man, I'm glad we can we can put it on our. Platform, I appreciate man. you. Um, anybody in the Broward County area knows that I take care of mine. Um, we have a great relationship, but yet my license has been suspended. I can't tell you how many times I'd have been in jail for it. Um, and I'm still not gonna entertain the system. So. If you guys want to help, we got a thousand sign a hundred thousand signature petition started up to change the custody laws and the timeshare laws and the child support laws, and we're also going to start a foundation to help sponsor fathers just like me get the adequate um, funding that they need to further be involved in their kid's life. Nice man, hey man, shout out to you for appreciate that, appreciate for that, that godly. Deed, man, we really need that in the world, man. That's an angel. you're an angel, bro. Bless her, bless so her. now, I want to go to the other content. How did you guys start being on camera and just you know being just so genuine and silly and pure for the people? Like, how does that? What made you guys want to put that out for people? Do you want to tell me? Want me I think she me? should say it. I think you should say it. Go yeah. tell them. Yeah. You could do half and half. All right, I'll Fine. start. Um, to be honest with you, one day she just walked up to me. She had seen, she always sees me making stupid ass videos. <laughs> and one day she just walked up to me and said, let's make a video. And I was like, shit, all right. And we made it. And then from there now, she could tell you, she always, she has her own cell phone. Show me your cell phone. She's got her own cell phone. She be taking her own she videos. Was, she was showing me this little flower app, <laughs> little flower she created. If you want to show it to the camera, go ahead, tell, tell them. them, man. Show them your RT. Show them your skills. Show them your art. Show this camera right there. Look at that, guys. You see that Picasso <laughs> right here? <laughs> so yeah. So Aaliyah, what made you want to get made on you camera go with that? With your dad. Tell him. Because you know, there's a lot of kids that now cool you can talk. And so what was your reason for it? Well, I wanted to be on camera with my dad because, well, he always makes videos. So <laughs> I wanted to make videos, too. <laughs> That's and a legit then reason. then we started making videos mm -hmm. together. What was your favorite video you guys made together? I don't really know because all of them a lot, are my huh? favorite. Oh, that was a good answer. <laughs> Smart answer, man. I'm Smart done. answer. <laughs> So how did you um how did you get into content? Um, because it looks like you've been doing this for a while. No, nah, the pandemic. No way. So I started my podcast during the pandemic. I was nope. a fan. Of, I'm a fan of that one, by the way. We Bless need some up. new interviews. Hey. I'm trying to get on there, please. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Hey, the season, is, the off season is over. No cap season two will be starting up. Yeah, we the are starting up. You had it was crazy. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. And I love talking about shit mm -hmm. like that. And um. 
I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like, so that was all in the span of one year. That was all in the, the span of the pandemic. I promise you, bro. It gave me time to really do everything I wanted to do. So during the pandemic, I was just making videos with her on the football field and running track. Da 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 da. And I noticed she's not camera shy. So I'm not gonna hold her back. She'll tell you, I don't. I'm not supposed to say this on camera. But I don't really give a fuck about school. Dad, you're not supposed to say bad words <laughs> on camera. You feel me? But she knows if she wanted to be a musician, I'm going to send her to music school. If yep. she wanted to be an actor, I'm going to send her to acting school. If she wanted to, whatever she wants to do, I'm going to lead her in that direction. So I'm not really one to be like school this, school that. No, fuck that. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Because I don't need you learning one plus one is two if you want to be a motherfucking... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you want to be a a video content creator, if you want to be an actor, none of that really matters. It matters so you could... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I actually, could teach you that. A really good example of that is actually the my cameraman slash director, Yamsville. Man, he uh, his story is crazy because he started out at FIU, the basic classes, and then like he always just was like, this has nothing to do with what I want to do. So he actually took the initiative. He took a little time off, but he found the school that was perfect for him and what he needed. And he skirted off to that. And man, I don't think I could do this without him. He got a lot of knowledge. So shout out to him. Hey, I'm not even going to lie. You got skills too. Hey, I've been peeping everything going on with the podcast, everything. You guys have a great show going on. I. I don't know if you're doing the editing, how how it goes, but y'all got. I'm a not break. gonna lie. I'm gonna take. I'm, I'm gonna take some <laughs> a little bit of credit for that. I'm gonna stop being humble for two seconds. <laughs> but y'all got a no, good team. I right really now. can't do it. Y'all really yeah. got a good team. Y'all really yeah, got a good. Ones. I got yeah. my Emil's my brother, and I got my real brother here with me. Oh, okay. So Bless up. Yeah, always, I be seeing. I be seeing him at the barber <laughs> shop. I didn't know that was your real brother. Yeah, okay. we always have day ones with us, man. That's that's blood brother though for sure. Got to, got to. <laughs> But and man, man, it's been a great episode, man. I really appreciate you for you guys coming, man. You guys shared that. so much knowledge. Anything you want to say to the camera for you guys get out of here? Go ahead, drop some gems on the baby girl. <laughs> Any advice you want to give to kids out there? Not really. Are you are you ready for school? Yeah. Are you excited for school? That's the key. No. Okay, uh, I mean, we take truth, man. Truth doesn't hurt, man. Just be truthful. <laughs> That's what we learned. This has been another great episode of Ordinary Other Selective File with Mr. Najee Crawford and Miss Aaliyah. We appreciate you guys, man. Best luck of your success to you. Are we, oh, are we still going? Yeah, if you want to say any last... Oh, hey. yeah, I'm sorry. How can I forget, hey. man? I got caught up in conversation. <laughs> Y'all be on the lookout. You? I am Jason Love, Najee Crawford, Glizzy Gang, coming to you soon. We got the podcast coming. Um, what's up? And we got the YouTube channel for the kids. My daughter is coming out with her own YouTube we channel for that, kids. Man. We need she that. will be playing with toys in an elaborate way, showing everybody how to do crazy things with toys. Oh, and that's yes. a money maker right there. All the reveals and all those unboxing. You, if you guys do it the right, I know you guys are gonna go far. So. And uh, I just want to give a special shout out to Derek. I really appreciate you. I've been trying to get something like this going on for a whole year. I have my own podcast. You always show me love on my podcast. I appreciate that. I bless up sure, for bringing man. me out to yours. And if you guys want to follow me, follow me at Najee Crawford or on TikTok. I am Najee Crawford. Hey, I'm the realest barber in Broward County. My daddy raised me as dark as he can. Y'all stop fucking playing with me. Tune in. Tap in. Next week for my tea. For my YouTube channel, we are going to have a little surprise. Oh, she she gets <laughs> I didn't even know if that was supposed to be said on here. How oh, do you know that, that was, was you, gotta, you guys heard it here first, but man. But shit, fuck it. We finna drop it. She got a little surprise for y'all. Yeah. All right, man. And my dad again. doesn't even know what it is, oh. though. <laughs> Ooh, he really doesn't even know what it is. I really don't. I don't well, know what hey, she's well, talking about. I'll tell you what. We'll be over here watching, all right? Okay. Thank you guys for stopping by. It's been another episode of Ordinary Other Selected Files. Derek X301, Najay Crawford, and Aaliyah Crawford in the flesh. Let's go. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Bye. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys so fucking much, man. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you, man.